what's good youtube and a double what's good to everyone that subscribed into the channel thank you for being subscribed my name is coach and in today's video we're going to be reviewing the tyranid swarm warhammer 40k commander deck I just found out this just got released so what we're gonna do is go over the deck list review the cards in the list to see how the deck plays so that if you're thinking about purchasing a Warhammer 40k commander deck, you can make a more informed decision. First thing we look at is the price of the deck. We have 192.36. I lack the ability to confidently say that this deck will cost that much weeks after its release. It tends to be more expensive in the beginning just because the cards aren't out yet. So the commander of the deck that we have over here is the Swarm Lord. The Swarm Lord reads, when it enters the battlefield, it enters with two plus one plus one counters on it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. Okay, so he's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Whenever a creature you control with a counter on it dies, you draw a card. Okay. I mean, a commander that can draw you cards is always something nice, and when he dies, he draws you a card as well, which sounds pretty cool. First card we have here is uh, the Hormagant Horde, Ravenous. This is a new ability. No, I think, I think this ability has existed before. Ravenous says, this creature enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. If X is five or more, draw a card when it enters. Okay. You gotta pay a lot of mana to draw a card. So this deck better do a good job of making a lot of mana. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay three. If you do return that card, this card from your graveyard to your hand. Sporocyst, Ravenous, Defender enters the battlefield, search your library for up to X basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped. Ooh, this is a good card. I like that card. You know what would be cool? I'm already thinking. What if you were to play creatures for a ton of mana, bounce them back to your hand, and then recast them again? You need a lot of mana to trigger Ravenous multiple times, but it's it's an idea. There's a lot of cards in um, in red and green that that double mana. Ravenous, when Termagant Swarm dies, create a number of one-one green Tyranid creature tokens equal to Termagant Swarm's power. Okay. Then you play a card that has creatures enter the battlefield with plus one plus one counters. So that all those tier and creature tokens are two twos, which you can use a sacrifice outlet with Swarm Lord in play to potentially draw a ton of cards as you sacrifice them. Should be cool. Aberrant. Whenever Aberrant deals combat damage to a player, destroy target. I like cards like this. There's a card called uh, Trigon Predator that does the same thing and. I like praying, playing a, well, I do like praying. I like a Trigon Predator because Trigon Predator just demands removal. And if my opponent has to cast removal on one of my creatures, that means my commander is not. There's going to be less likely of a chance that my commander is removed. So I like cards like this. Biophagus. Add one mana of any color. If this mana is spent to cast a creature spell, that creature enters the battlefield with an additional counter on it. Okay. Trigger Ravenous. Moloch. Enters the battlefield, fights, and then exiles. Okay. There's some cool cards here. It's pretty decent. Basic lands you can show have add. Oh. That's pretty cool. What if you have copies of this card? Question 
If you know how to answer this question, you can write it in the comments, write it in a way that's easy to understand so that new players can uh, get it. But this says add tap to add two colorless mana. What if I had two copies of this? Would my lands tap for four colorless? That's a question. Ravener. Target creature attacks target opponent this turn if able. Okay. Seems like a random effect. I'm not sure if you, I mean, it has ravenous, which is cool. It's a Tyranid. Seems random. I mean, it would be cool if you played this deck alongside a lot of creatures that had, uh, that could copy creatures you control so you can get these abilities multiple times. That would be cool. Turvigon. Deals combat damage, create that many 1-1 one, one green tyranny creature tokens. I think these cards are the best. Cards that are making a ton of tokens, that those cards seem to work really well with the Swarm Lord because you would have to imagine that all these cards are going to enter the battlefield with counters on them and then you just sack them all and draw a ton of cards. Which is nice. We have the Zoanthrope. That's Zoanthrope. I don't know if you guys have ever played a game called Bloody Roar. There's a game called Bloody Roar, and I think in Bloody Roar 3 or 4, there's a final boss that I think is the same name as that card. Shout out to the people that know what I'm talking about. Shout out to the people that know Bloody Roar. Bloody Roar is an awesome game. Anyway, we have a Flying Ward 2. Enters the battlefield, deals X damage. That's a cool one. Uh, tax destroy up to one target artifact. Ooh, that's that's really good for three mana. And you would have to imagine this creature would have counters on it, so it'd be a lot bigger than a two-two. That's the second card that does that. There's the other one over here that does the same thing. That's pretty cool. So. Next card we have is the Italian Jackal, Trample Haste, deals damage, put a land onto the battlefield, necessary, Exocrine, enters the battlefield, deals X damage to each player and each other creature, board wipe, this is a solid card right here, Gearson Starn, Kellermorph, Ward 2, Ward is good. Don't sleep on ward. Whenever another source you control deals exactly one damage to a permanent or a player, Starn deals two damage to that permanent or player. Interesting. When Malanthrope enters the battlefield, exile target player's graveyard, put a counter on Malanthrope for each creature card exiled this way. Okay. Pure Strain Gene Stealer. When it attacks, you may remove a counter. If you do, search your library for a basic land. Yeah. Necessary. So that, this is what I'm saying, where if, if you're able to make copies of these cards and they enter the battlefield, and then you do something to make all of them unblockable, give them flying so that their attack triggers can go off easily, so if I had two copies of this card, you know, I could potentially attack with two three threes, you know, in two turns that would get me four lands, which seems necessary for this deck. Tyranid Prime, Evolve, ooh, I like Evolve. I'm gonna read this. Evolve. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has greater power or toughness than this creature, put a counter on this creature. This is a bomb card. That's really good. We have the Tyrant Guard. Sacrifice Tyrant Guard. Creatures you control with counters on them give hexproof and indestructible. Oh. Yeah, give me multiple copies of that, please. That's a good card. 
you could basically sacrifice this to protect another tyrant guard and then get another tyrant guard onto the battlefield and then just have this indestructible line of creatures. That's super cool. Venom Throat, Flying Death Attacks. We'll take that card out of the deck. Uh, Broodlord. Uh, enters the battlefield, distribute X plus and plus encounters among any number of other target creatures you control. Okay, I've seen many Hydras do the same thing. Death Leaper Terror Weapon, my... <laughs> the name of that card. Uh, Flash, Haste, creatures you control to enter the battlefield this turn have double strike. Cool Commander. Argoyle Flock. At the beginning of your end step, creature into the battlefield under your control this turn, create a 1 1. Yeah. Create a 1 1 Tyranid token with flying. That's what I'm saying. Give me the 1 1 Tyranid tokens to give counters to. Put any cards that create 1 1 tokens because our commander doesn't care. Our commander wants to, whenever a creature, it doesn't have to be a Tyranid token, it can be any creature. Cool. Where were we? Gene Stealer Locust. Whenever a creature attacks you, it gets minus one, minus zero. Whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents, it gets plus zero, plus one. Take that card out of the deck. Aerospex. Whenever another creature dies, put a counter on Aerospex. Remove X one one counters from Aerospex. Add X mana of any one color. Okay. Lictor. Whenever Lictor enters the battlefield, if a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control this turn, create create a 3-3 Tyranid. Oh nice. That's cool. Magus Lucia Kane. A lot of words here. <laughs> Beginning of combat on your turn, put a counter on target creature. Add two colorless when you next cast a spell with X in its mana cost or activate an ability with X in its activation cost this turn. Copy that spell or ability. Yeah, this is this is exactly what I'm saying. This this I mean it, whether you want to prioritize the card draw, I would see why you would play Swarm Lord as your commander, but this card right here does exactly what I was saying. This gives you mana and it lets you copy spells, which means that you can have two copies of any of these creatures that are not legendary, which is this card is the commander of the deck. That's a great card and it puts counters on creatures. Wow. I mean, I, I see why the, the Swarm Lord is flashy. And it's, I think, it, drawing cards is cool. And that's why you have the Swarm Lord in the front of the box. But this card right here is, this is what the deck wants to do right here. It's kind of funny that that was there. The Red Terror. Ooh. <laughs> Legendary creature. Wow, this is pretty cool. Whenever a red source you control does damage to one or more permanents and or players, put a counter on the red terror. Wow. Does that go infinite? Not necessarily infinite. Unless you can get infinite red mana, would that go infinite with pestilence? Then you could just give them infinite plus and plus encounters. Not pestilence, um... The card that acts like pestilence. I forget what it's called. Toxicrine. Reach, death touch, all lands have tap. Add one mana of any color, lose all other abilities. Okay. Trigon Prime. <laughs> I was talking about Trigon Predator earlier. Whenever this attacks, put a counter on it and a counter on up to one other target attacking creature that creature can't be blocked this turn yeah unblockable is good 
Each creature you control gets plus one, plus one for each plus one, plus one counter on it. Whoa, making copies of this? Gene Stealer Patriarch. Whenever Gene Stealer Patriarch attacks, put an infection counter target creature defending player controls. Whenever a creature with an infection counter on it dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a Tyranid in addition to its other types. Okay. Just Nagathron? We have a Screamer Killer. Whenever you cast a creature spell with mana value 5 or greater, Screamer Killer deals 5 damage to any target. This card is just good. This card just goes in... I don't know how many... Oh, because you're doing Ravenous. Yeah, this card is good in this deck, but generally this card works well in any deck that's that uh, has a ton of spells with mana value 5 or greater. It's a good card. Winged Hive Tyrant Flying Haste. Other creatures you control with counters on them have flying and haste. Ow. Yo. This is a GG card. Old one, oh man, is this Vornclex? Old one, I. Trample, other creatures you control have trample. When old one, I enters the battlefield, create a 5-5 five, five green Tyranid creature token, okay? At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you may discard two cards. If you do, return old one, I, from your graveyard to your hand. I mean... It seems like a good card in the deck. I don't know why you'd want to, I mean, play this as your commander. Seems pretty cool. I like that card. It's cool. Tyranid Herodon. Flying Ward 4. <laughs> whenever another tier, whenever Tyranid Herodon, whenever Tyranid Herodon or another Tyranid you control does combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 one, one blue Tyranid Gargoyle creature token with flying. Yeah, this is a bomb in the deck. This is such a good card. This is exactly, exactly what we were talking about. Put Brutaclad in this deck. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may remove any number of plus one plus one counters from among creatures you control. This spell costs two less to cast for each counter removed this way. Okay. Vigilance reach ward two. Can't be blocked by creatures of power two or less. It is a 12-12. In a pre-con game, that, that could be really strong. If it has trample from the old one eye. Okay, so we have uh, some cards that are fairly common. Explore, far seek, all breach, rampant growth. Are there any lands in particular that are really good? Nothing that I see here. Nothing stands out. Death's presence. Oh, wow. Well, the first tyrannic war. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield if its mana cost contains X. It enters the battlefield with a number of plus and plus encounters on it equal to the number of lands you control. Wow. Double the number of each kind of counter on target creature you control. That can win you a game. Abundance. Card goes infinite. Shadow in the warp. First creature spell you cast each turn costs two less to cast. Whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, Shadow and the Warp deals two damage to that player. That can really speed up the game. And that reduces the cost. Oh, this is a good card. This helps Ravenous. If I can make multiple copies of Shadows and the Warp, we are in blue, so there are cards that let us make copies of enchantments. This is a cool card. Overgrowth. New Horizons, Bread for the Hunt, Hardened Scales. Nice, Hardened Scales. That's fun. Lyoth Truck. Whenever this attacks, put two counters on another target attacking creature. Uh, I don't think I would be able to because I would take this card out of the deck. Uh, Icon of Ancestry. Uh, 
just lets you search for Tyranids. Beginning of your oh, Harold's Horn, that's an amazing art. Bone Sabers. Whenever a equip creature attacks, put four counters on it. Wow, that's going into Skullbriar immediately. Arcane Signet. Soul Ring. Whoa. Tyranid Invasion. Create a number of 3-3 three, three tokens with Trample equal to the number of opponents you have. Okay. Aetherize. Inspiring Call. It's a perfect card in this deck. Harrow, Cultivate, and Starstorm. So... My initial thought, or my gut sense, is that I would have to give this deck a, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being extremely powerful, I would give this a, a 7. I think that it has the potential to go with, you know, if you spend... $30, $40 extra to upgrade the deck. You might have something that could go up from uh, a 7 to an 8 or a 9. I think that this deck has a ton of cool creatures. 36 creatures. I would substitute a lot of the creatures, remove some of them to add some more that have creatures get counters on them when they enter the battlefield. And then I would find cards that allowed me to make copies of permanents as I cast them or as they enter the battlefield. I would add cards that entered the battlefield as copies of other creatures. I would play cards like a crystal shard that would let me bounce a creature on my battlefield back to my hand so that if I have a card in play that allows me to make copies of creatures as I cast them, I could then bounce a creature, cast the creature again, make another copy. Then my next turn, I could bounce a creature back to my hand, cast it again, and get another copy. So that I can just keep getting the same creatures over and over again, so that uh, you could potentially put a lot of pressure on your opponents. You know, when I take a look at some of the you know, the enchantments over here. I think that instead of going for, cause there's a lot of creatures over here that give you lands. And I think that the, the deck wants to play aggressively. So if you can find any other cards that gave you lands or creatures that give you lands, I would swap those out for the enchantments that you have here that just allow your lands to tap for more mana. And then just focus on playing enchantments that double, or creatures potentially, that double my mana. Or triple my mana in some cases. I would even play a card like Braid of Fire that gives you, every time it's your upkeep, you get an additional red mana to add to your mana pool during your first main phase. Which I think over time can lead to just some explosive plays because this deck I think that the it's really dependent on your ability to make mana you want to trigger ravenous a ton of times to make a bunch of really big creatures and then potentially you need counters on your creatures to draw cards so I think that this deck seems incredibly fun you know I, I can't sit here and say that this is going to be the strongest thing in the world because I have to see it and you know I mentioned probably seven different ways I could update the deck which means that it could be kind of all over the place and you would just have to figure out which one is the most important and then just kind of focus on the one strategy to upgrade the deck but I think there's a lot of different things you can do with this and it seems incredibly fun and you know, if you're thinking about purchasing this deck, I would tell you if if you you like the art style, you like putting counters on creatures, and you you enjoy being creative when you build commander decks, you can do whatever you want with this. This this looks awesome. This looks incredibly fun, and I think regardless of what you do, it's gonna be pretty strong and and uh, just look cool on the table. So. 
that is the Tyranid Swarm decklist review. Just keep in mind that we will be reviewing all of the other Warhammer 40k commander decks. We will be playtesting this deck over here on Moxfield. If that video is not already up, you can subscribe. And at some point in the future, I will upload that video if it's not already there. And we will be doing the same thing for all of the other Warhammer 40k commander decks. So if you like content like this, you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I genuinely appreciate it if you did. And if you are subscribed, here is a triple what's good. Thank you for being subscribed to the channel. I genuinely appreciate it. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Whenever I end these videos, I always say the same thing. Always remember, eat healthy or as healthy as you can. Work out every single day, even if it's just for five minutes. And most importantly, you got to believe in yourself and subscribe to the channel.